Welcome back to the Bank Guide. I'm your Bank Guy, Colin, and today's another video in the Five Minute Logic Expert series where I'm bringing you 30 tips and tricks for recording, mixing, and mastering in Logic in 30 days. And today we're looking at every tool in Logic. And by tool, I mean the cursor tools, which are really important for moving around in your session. And there's also a lot of them. So it can be a little bit overwhelming when you're looking at it. So today we're just gonna break them all down so you know what they all are and you can feel confident in what you're using and why. Let's go and get straight into it. And as I said, we're looking at the cursor tools, which you can find up here and there's a lot of them, right? So the pointer tool is the first tool in the line. It's kind of your default tool. And this allows us to move a region around. It also allows us to shorten regions, or let's say we have two regions back to back. Uh, let's actually do this by, I'll pull this up into here. So imagine that you have recorded uh, two takes of something and you just want to shorten this first version here and bring some of this version back. Well, if you go kind of halfway up, a little over halfway, it allows you to pull back this second region, or if you want to elongate the first region, you can do that. So pretty cool, just like basic editing stuff that you can do with the pointer tool. There's a few more things you can do with this, but we're gonna talk about that in tomorrow's video, where I go through the two tools that I use 90% of the time, spoiler alert, the pointer tool is one of them, but there's way more that you can do with it, but you have to change some settings. So we're gonna look at that tomorrow. Let's go and go through the pencil tool. The pencil tool is really cool if you need to like draw automation, for example. This just allows you to draw it in. You can also draw MIDI notes with the pointer tool. Pretty cool. Eraser tool is basically a delete tool. I can just delete a region. I can delete another region. I can delete another region. I can see that being handy if you need to delete a lot of stuff, I guess. Your text tool, I think just allows you yeah, to edit the name of anything. So any region that you click on, I can now type in a new name for this, right? That's pretty neat. Uh, your scissors tool, this just is going to split any region, drummer region, MIDI region, whatever region, it's just gonna split it wherever you touch it. So kind of handy. Uh, the join tool here is going to join two regions together. So like here, I have these two regions. If I select both of them with the join tool, just gonna join them together. I think it can do more than just two regions as well. I've never actually used this because I would just select the regions and hit command J to join instead but you can do it with this tool. The solo tool I think is cool in theory, but I think is really clunky and doesn't really work. So if audio is playing, if I click, it's going to solo that region, but as you can see, it Instead of lying that you're stable. didn't even do it at first there. So it's kind of weird, right? But it's cool in theory. Uh, the mute tool is actually very handy though. The mute tool, you can mute any region that you have selected or that you just click on. So. I actually do use that one a fair amount. It works with the MIDI regions and drum regions as well. Zoom tool will zoom in on anything that you select, any region that you select. And if you hold option on the keyboard and click, it will put you back to where you were zoom wise. The fade tool will fade in regions. So if I pull here, it's gonna fade in now or cross fade between two regions. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but there's a way to do that with the pointer tool. We're gonna look at that tomorrow, so come back for that. Uh, the automation selection tool is the most literal tool I can imagine. It allows me to select the automation. Kind of helpful, I guess. And then the automation curve tool, this one actually is pretty cool. If I have a line like this, a slope, I can go to the automation curve tool and actually curve it. So let me exaggerate that a little bit more with the pointer here so you can really see it. So I can make it basically like a slow fade out. Uh, could be great for something like a fade out. Or if you wanted to do uh, like the opposite where it curves down really quickly, you can do that with this curve tool. Pretty cool tool. I definitely do use that one sometimes, but you only need to pull that up every once in a while. The marquee tool can do a bunch of stuff. If we're on automation, I can select a region here and then go back to my pointer and pull up and it's going to turn up everything on that region, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then if we're in our main view with the marquee tool, then you can select and I could copy and then I could go over here and paste. So you can do things like that. You can also select and if I play, it's just gonna play the area that I've selected. Uh, it's also great if you just select a region that you wanna delete and then hit delete, it's gonna delete it for you. Pretty cool. I love the marquee tool. And then the flex tool, this one basically uh, enables flex time and allows you to shift uh, the audio around. So if I pull that there, it just automatically shifted that audio. If you haven't analyzed for flex time, it's gonna pull up this whole thing. Uh, I don't love this tool because it's actually doing some things behind the scenes. If we pull up our flex time, it's creating all these points and I can't see exactly what it's doing. Um, so it's not my preferred way to work with flex time, but it is kind of neat and it's cool that they include it in tool form. 
The gain tool uh, is really cool, however. This is a tool where if I just wanna turn up this whole region, I could turn up that whole region uh, that quickly. So I could use this to go through really quickly and kind of balance if I have big volume variances throughout my song, I can balance the, the region volumes really quickly. So we can see here, if I go to marquee and select this area where it's a little bit quieter, then go down to gain, I could then gain up just that region. Or if uh, we are on our pointer tool, I could just select this region and split, and then now I could take this region and use the gain tool to turn that up. So pretty cool. Uh, you can do this another way if you just go under, if you had I to bring up this window and go under track name, I could turn the gain up and down over here as well. But it's pretty cool that you can do it with a tool if you're using, this is kind of a new feature they added it not too long ago to Logic, so you could be using an older version that doesn't have it. So those are all the tools in Logic. There's two that I use all the time, and that's what we're gonna talk about tomorrow, so be sure to come back for that. I really think there are two tools that you're gonna use all the time, but there's a couple settings that you need to enable to get the most out of them. So we're gonna do a whole video on that. Before you go, I wanna give you something. If you're struggling to get a mix that sounds good in Logic, I put together a completely free six step checklist to a pro mix that just goes through the six steps that all professional mixes have and how you can do it in Logic. It's completely free from the link in the description below, so be sure to pick it up. I'd also love to hear from you, what is your favorite tool and are any of these totally new to you? Let me know in the comments below. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video. One thing at a time, I can